Right now is a good time to be a gas blowback fan, because we've been getting a lot of great stuff lately. Northeast with their Uzi line and their soon to be released from Moss, and VFC just showed off a gas blowback FNC and a PPSH at MOA, that's getting a lot of hype right now. I'm still waiting for a gas blowback Galil, but whatever. While I wait for that FAMAS and PPSH to hit the United States, I thought I'd put a call out for some of the best custom airsoft setups out in the world. And all of them needed to be gas blowback for this countdown. Last time on the Airsoft Top Series, we ran down 8 AK builds, so go check out that last episode if you haven't already. Or sit back and enjoy this one for now. Welcome to the Top 10 Custom Gas Blowbacks. Made in part thanks to the Airsoft Heretics group and the Heavy Recoil Club discussion group on Facebook. Those groups gathered some of the very best builds for this show, and I'd highly suggest you check out those groups on Facebook with the links that will be left in the description down below, along with the parts list to each ranked build featured in today's countdown. And right before we get into this video, I just wanted to let everyone know that I'll be at D14's Winter Swap Meet on December 30th. I love going to this event in Sanger, Texas, and even if you're not looking to pick up something or get rid of some gear, it's D14, arguably the best airsoft field in the state of Texas. You're going to have fun regardless, so come on out to D14 on December 30th. But first up for this countdown, Steel Rat 067 of the UK turned in his backup to his Real Sword SVD for the 10th spot. This is his custom Gletcher APSA Stetchkin. I know that VFC has teased their own Stetchkin for a couple years now, but until that one hits the market, Steel Rat will rock this piece that was entirely put together by a company out of Russia. He said that the suppressor, stock, and outer barrel are all custom made from steel, and the pistol and all of its parts were all finished like the real thing. This might have been too good of a job as it was held onto by UK Customs after 13 months of waiting for it to get sent out of Russia in the first place. Once it was in private hands, Steel Rat's local airsoft shop, Fubar Bundy, internally modified it so it would be downgraded from 450 feet per second to a more reasonable 300 feet per second. As you can tell, this whole build pays close attention to authenticity and realism. While at the ninth spot, a SoCal native named Cutter of Team Low Speed High Drag with his SCAR build is going for straight up performance in CQB. Cutter wanted to keep this $1,300 package as compact as possible, so a side folding stock had to remain on it, even if that meant that he hated the look of the notorious Ugg boot stock. So, he switched it to a Picatinny adapter and a short MCX stock as it folds perfectly against the AW Custom Drum Mag without blocking any controls. Then he threw on an Odin Mini GL Lite and Laser Combo. However, GamePod recently just banned lasers before he could even field this build. And that's terrible timing. But at least the Mad Bull PWS rail extension adds a little bit more flair. For how people fight over if the SIG MCX stock is good looking or not, I think it's striking on this scar, and I give Cutter props for running a gas blowback rifle in CQB. I actually give props to anyone running a gas blowback rifle in any environment, but especially in CQB, which helps me transition into the 8th spot nicely, which is held onto by the founder and owner of the Heavy Recoil Club, Ivo, aka Bridges, for his custom WE Tech PDW. Once again, we see an MCX style stock, this time by 5KU, on a custom Picatinny adapter. Then we have a Strike Industries 15 degree pistol grip, a Strike Industries front grip, a Strike Industries extended magazine release, a Vortex optics crossfire, and a custom painted outer barrel. While under the hood, a homemade end pass, a customized RA Tech adjustable trigger, and a TNT WEBS TAS hop up unit, bucking, and barrel were added in. Recently, I've noticed that the Knight's Armament PDW has fallen off a bit in popularity in the past couple years. So I'm happy to see one submitted for this episode of the Airsoft Top Series, especially since it's coming from the Heavy Recoil Club itself. And I'll let you guys debate in the comments down below which of these two setups would you rather rock in CQB. And if I actually look at the list again and the submission pools, we had a lot of CQB submissions this time. The next three spot holders are all CQB dominant builds. But I gotta show some love to stuff like this FN57 by Ed, 
who designed his own 3D printed trace unit that was stylized to look like Sam Fisher's 5.7. It's said to also have a garter slide and a 6.01 millimeter inner barrel. And I cannot skip Column's minier M14, which he put together with a KJW KCO2. Of course, this KCO2 is full of Rogue Works internals with a Flamingo bucking, a Mark 23 suppressor, a beautiful Samson B Team walnut stock, and a Game Reaper 1022 scope mount, holding onto an Ares ZF39 replica scope which is a pretty interesting pick, but okay. Then to finish this build, you'd find a BFG sling, a custom made tapered barrel by Project Precision Tuning on Discord, and a modded grub screw TDC. I might not be able to show off every single build that was submitted for this show, but I'll always try my best. However, moving along to the second pistol for this episode, Leon X Montana of San Diego presents his ground up high kappa build. As routine for any extensive high kappa build, the parts list is vast. From the outside to the inside, this secondary turned primary got its looks to a staccato pistol grip, a lilac 7 inch compensator frame, an edge triangle slide, and thanks to LA Kappa Customs who supplied the front and rear sights, slide stop, thumb safeties, grip safety, speed trigger, and frame screws. Then a custom snow camo Cerakote by Gunfighter Tactical capped it all off. The real performance that these high kappas are known for can be credited to the Cow Cow Hammer Springs, Airsoft Masterpiece Leaf Spring and Hammer, 9-Ball 6.03 7-inch Inner Barrel, ESC Works Flat Hop Bucking, LA Kappa Customs Trigger Bow, Turbo Blowback Housing, Precision Hop Up Unit, Short Stroke Kit and Guide Rod, Waldo Innovations Recoil Nozzle Spring, and a Garter Nozzle. LA Kappa Customs then ends the parts list with firing group parts and a trigger tune. I know sooner or later I'll have to make another top 5 custom airsoft pistols episode, so I guess this will stir the pot a little bit just to see if you guys really want to see that. However, I have two more compact setups and they're both a rare sight for sure. It's time to bring in some Uzis, or in this case, a Guzi. You may remember this builder for his homemade China Lake build, but today Carlos of Renegade Cal Productions is turning in this. I wonder if Northeast Airsoft can legally buy this back from you just to revert it back to what it used to be. This is literally a Northeast MP2A1 with the remains of a JG G36C grafted onto it. This abomination was made to actually improve the ergonomics of the graceful cinder block that is a full-sized Uzi. To make it accessory friendly, Carlos said. And surprisingly, despite how it looks, it now shoulders really well and points naturally. Even though it's open bolt, the more inline stock helps stabilize the bolt. And the recoil is natural on full auto. It's a perfect SMG for CQB. Carlos said. You might consider this to be a joke of a submission, and knowing its owner, it probably is. After all, just look at the stacked iron sights. But the submission pool loved this goozy, so here it is to stay. I now expect to see something similar in a low budget sci fi movie any day now. But a little bit more serious now, at the fifth spot, we have a submission from Hungary. This is FNV Workshop's really cool looking KWC Mini Uzi. I never see these modded, so this build caught my eye in the Heavy Recoil Club discussion group when it was submitted. If you can believe this, FNV claims this setup is now more tactical than any MP7 or MP9 could ever be. To come to that conclusion, he added a garter aluminum upper and lower receiver kit, a garter steel threaded outer barrel, a covert tactical 40 by 100 mm suppressor, an M-lock hand stop, and a bunch of his own in-house made parts, like an aluminum extended M-lock handguard, steel ambi charging handles, a steel flat trigger, a long top rail, a pro pistol style grip and grip safety, an adjustable folding stock, an FPS reducing rocket valve, and FNV designed direct inject CO2 magazine extensions. I love seeing really unique stuff submitted for these shows, and you can bet that we get a lot of that kind of stuff here. But since these are only now making a resurgence, you know I had to put this Uzi Pro lookalike in this top 10. 
So thank you FNV Workshop for submitting. I wouldn't say that you did bad for only $400. We're now down to the top four out of the hundreds of builds that were submitted. I always have more countdowns planned and I could always show off what you guys have brewing on your workbenches. So if you would like a chance to be featured in the very next episode of the Airsoft Top Series, then go ahead and follow us on Instagram or on Facebook. I'll leave both linked in the description down below. You can also follow everything else that we're doing on the US Airsoft channel there. Just be sure that you follow the correct US Airsoft Instagram page. Instagram really doesn't like to show this page to people. You have to type it in very specifically sometimes. If it looks like this, then it's the correct page. It's very annoying that I have to explain this, but like I said, Instagram doesn't want anyone to follow us. And for all the people that submitted their builds over Instagram, like DP Chief 216 with his KWA Tavor, thank you very much. This was probably my favorite of all the Instagram submissions, but there were so many really good builds on there. But back to the countdown at the fourth spot. Some people are gonna love this and some people are gonna hate it. I'm just being real with you. But I think the whole Groza concept was due for modernization. So welcome Centurion Actual and his GHK AK-74M that now looks like this. This build, surprisingly, is a rather basic one despite its appearance and the $1,000 price tag attached to it. Centurion Actual really wanted to have his own version of the Kochevnik, shown off by Lazarev Tactical. So, with the TWI bullpup kit and a bit of altercations to make it fit, the rough setup was already done. Next came an LCT B10M, a Bar 10 optics rail, and some screws and bolts around the workshop. We've seen a few homemade bullpup AKs on this show, and some of you guys are relentless at grilling them in the comments for even the slightest sniff of jank. But this builder knocked it out of the park. This doesn't look like his first build. I could actually see this being sold by SEMA or GHK or maybe even WE Tech. And if you want to run it just as much as I do, then let me know in the comments. But from the first submission from the Philippines to the first submission made for this episode, we have Michael Wells and his VFC FAL DX at the third spot. Michael, much like myself, is a big 308 fan. If it's 762 or 308, then we're a fan of it. M14s, FALs, G3s, and so on. And for this unique rifle, it was all about bringing it to modern spec. To accomplish that, a budget of $2,000 was used to get as many official DSA parts as possible, along with getting them to all fit with some machine work. That includes the Extreme Duty Extended Railed Top Cover, Rifle Link M-Lock Handguard, Ambidextrous Extended Magazine Releases, Folding Charging Handle, M249 Style Pistol Grip, and the BRS Stock. These last three builds are all very extensive, and some are straight up one-of-a-kind pieces of work. Michael did a lot of work polishing internal parts and making little changes like cross-hatching the cylinder nozzle to reduce surface area and promote o-ring lubrication. The OEM stock bracket had to be modded to allow mounting of a DSA BRS stock, and it was converted to a para model with more DSA parts. He made his own H-bar barrel kit for this FAL with a donor DNA steel barrel as a base and two VFC 417 outer barrels. Then to work with his custom barrel kit, a real Israeli FAL H-bar gas block was then altered and fitted to finally complete the overall look. I can always admire a build with a lot of real parts on them, especially if those parts have age to them, like with real fake guns Type 56 that we showed off in the last episode. And Michael is a really dedicated builder who loves these types of projects, so I'm really happy to have him here. I would recommend that he keeps crafting and modding, as we could always use more gas blowback battle rifles out there. At the runner-up spot, however, I have a builder I briefly showcased in the last episode over custom AKs that I keep mentioning. What I didn't realize is just how much work had to be done to convert an LCT LCK-15 AEG into one of the very first AK-15 gas blowbacks in the world. So here it is. This is Catherine's art piece. If you could believe this, Catherine told me that 
She made this conversion that took up to two years because there was a gotcha game character that she wanted to cosplay and figured she would just go all in. Of course, something like converting an AEG to a gas blowback takes a lot of machine work, and that's very true. First, the barrel had to be cut down to fit the FCG and magazine. She had to drill the pinholes for the FCG pins and sliced out some of the steel reinforcements that LCT put in. She then designed her own 3D printed rear trunnion and pistol grip adapter to use the original AEG grip. Catherine also said, I used a WNS full travel bolt with the top shaved down to fit the AK-15 dust cover reinforcement, and I drilled a hole in my outer barrel to accept a grub screw for the 3D printed hop unit. I also have a custom printed Spitfire device shell that mimics the original muzzle brake, but provides a flash, and a Novus PDS-1 with Defy engravings on the side. Last was an Arcturus magazine release and stock because the original LCT release broke and the stock wasn't QD spec and couldn't fit my sling. Of course, you can expect the full parts list in the description down below, but for now, we have a GHK fire control group, GHK magazine internals using the Devil Hunter modifications or just green gas depending on the field, a GHK one joule nozzle, a WNS full travel bolt and parts set, Hephaestus steel firing pin and trigger sear, a Maple Leaf 370mm Crazy Jet barrel with a Maple Leaf 6 degree bucking, a novice PDS-1 prism sight with custom Defy team name laser engraved on the side, an Arcturus AK-12 magazine catch and stock, the Spitfire tracer unit internals we mentioned, and a Faro Concepts single point sling. Then the hop-up unit and feed ramp, magazine shells, rear trunnion, pistol grip adapter, and oversized flash hider were all 3D printed to complete this AK-15. This had to have been a pain to convert, but all in all, it came together great. I have another conversion at the top spot, but I can really appreciate the effort that went into this build. So thank you, Catherine, for your submission. The movie buffs are gonna love this top spot, and that's for sure. I get a lot of crazy submissions. Even the builds that don't get ranks here are still awesome in their own right, and help inspire a lot of people to try different platforms, or to try out new attachments or whatever else. I've always loved that aspect of the Airsoft Top series. You can choose a new replica for a build, go to the US Airsoft channel, find this series, and put on an episode to help guide you along. And if you like that idea, then please add a like on this video so I can make sure you're enjoying what I do here. For everyone else that's done this already, I thank you. Here's your reward. Ladies and gentlemen, I present the top spot that was stolen in a heartbeat by Luke of Pennsylvania and is nearly true to life alien pulse rifle. Luke has been on the show before for his amazing smart gun loadout but this is his redemption arc, because thanks to shared love of aliens with his father, you're looking at a fully functioning WE Tech Thompson and APS Cam 870 combo in a real SPAS 12 heat shield that he got from Adam Savage of all people. Story goes that Adam was having an auction for a bunch of old spare parts and gear from past projects of his. And after a lot of careful studying of the pictures that were put up for the auction, Luke and his father hopped on the sale and got the heat shield from a real SPAS 12 for only $100 when it would have sold alone for $600 plus if they could even find one for sale. But the interesting story behind the heat shield they got could never be bought elsewhere. Luke also got a few other replica parts later on that helped on getting the sizing and shaping for the main body correct. This is not just a Snow Wolf Pulse Rifle AEG conversion to a gas blowback. That would be way too easy for this builder. He wanted to get it as close to the real deal as possible. The SPAS 12 heat shield had to be cut and resized in areas, including cutting out an entire ejection port before the APS Cam 870 could be chopped down and fitted inside. Afterwards, those parts had to be mounted to the Thompson with a bracket that this father and son duo machined. Then they learned how to forge aluminum and made the custom die and hammer forge sheet aluminum body. And this is just a brief summary 
but the results speak for themselves. And I don't have to spell it out on why this build deserves the top spot. They didn't cheap out and they went way above and beyond what most builders and enthusiasts would do. And I think that this would be a great example of a Holy Grail replica in the aliens community. And I'm happy to see where it is on this episode. So thank you very much, Luke, for your submission. And thank you to everyone else who submitted, along with the Airsoft Heretics group and Heavy Recoil Discussion group, for hosting submission pools where some of these amazing builds were submitted. I really could not do this episode or any of the episodes of the Airsoft Top Series without amazing groups like these. Again, check the descriptions for the parts list and all sorts of links to other great stuff, and come on out to D14 December 30th for their 10 year anniversary swap meet in Sanger, Texas. I hope to see you all there. But until that next video drops from the city of San Antonio, this has been Scott Hollenbeck, and I will be sure to see you all next time. Something I would really recommend if you come out to a swap meet is definitely go through some of these bins that have magazines and parts and all sorts of miscellaneous gear because you could just be like me and find six G3 magazines for your LCT G3 at home and two KWA M93R magazines and uh, walk out like a villain because this is 40 bucks and dude you can get so much great stuff at coming to the swap meet and I really got to thank this dude right here. No problem.